mission. And then there's what people do every day. And I do like the examples that we got as far as values are concerned. And I think that that has changed. Certainly it's changed over <clears throat> the last <clears throat> several years that I've been working. What would the world be like if we were all more responsible for the energy that we contributed? Because to be honest, we're always contributing to something. We are either coming into the room and making it better, or in our exchanges with one another, we're making it worse. It can't ever really be neutral. And Where empathy drives innovation every single day. And um, today I'm going to talk about our project, um, or a product called Sourceable, where we source, scale, and sustain. I look around the room, I don't say a word for a few seconds, and I say, I have heard that acknowledgement does not exist in the Finnish culture. Is that right? So please nod your head. Everybody nod their head. Now, yes. So this is to, you're my audience. Okay. It does not exist. You're agreeing with me. And then I said, now, I've also heard that Finland has one of the highest suicide rates in the world. Is that true? Yeah. I said, well, do you think there could be some connection between those two facts? The, the most logical thing. We told them we we're going to throw everything out the window and start again with that. Not exactly. That doesn't work so well. But we did adopt Agile principles along the way, and through adopting Agile principles, bettered our chance of success on the project. Oh, the legislator, they will kill you. So, everything has its own role. These are, I'm very excited about Agile, if you haven't tested it right. It's a good principle, there's a need for us to bring a marriage. So having said that, that's the correct answer right here. To ask yourself that question, before you send out the communication, the purpose of this communication is to fill in that blank. If you can't complete that and fill in that blank before you send out that communication, what do you expect people to do when they receive it? The human brain in the short-term memory working area of the brain can only hold on to a finite amount of information. Typically, across humankind, it's clusters of information. Those clusters of information, don't ask me how, they've determined number seven plus or minus two. What does that mean and translate to the project environment? It means if you're going to communicate, whether that be in a PowerPoint slideshow or a business status report or some other official communication, you want to limit your, your points of that memo to five to nine points. It's about all anybody can take and remember. More than that, you've overloaded them. And the effectiveness of your communication is probably going downhill. When we talk about portfolio for dashboard and program dashboard, we are talking about ongoing projects. We are not talking about portfolio as in, you know, uh, creating the business case and going to the business for budget and those kinds. That's not the focus of this presentation. The focus of this presentation is that the project is already started and, you know, budget has been assigned and so forth. So if you get confused with the word portfolio, I'm sorry about that. Uh, different organizations, they use different. So here, when I say portfolio, I mean collection of product projects and programs. Traditions had done. We use this extensively uh, in our planning. So really, this industry knowledge from previous climbers was paramount. We had this huge number of bags, and generally, the, it, it takes two months to climb Mount Everest. So there's just an incredible amount of equipment and supplies that are needed. And the glacier is continuously moving and changing shape. So base camp is continuously moving and changing shape. This is the highest point for the most part that they're able to do helicopter rescues. So because the air is too thin above this point. So their helicopter is coming in almost on a daily basis doing rescues from base camp. And of the two months we spent climbing Everest, about a month of it was spent right here at base camp for climatization reasons that I'll mention in a moment. But the best part was that we had just spent two months building up red blood cells. And we had a ton of red blood cells in our bodies, over double what I have right now. We had done what you could call natural blood doping. You've heard of blood doping in the Olympics, it's illegal. 
But athletes will take blood out of their bodies, allow their bodies to build red blood cells, and then put the blood back in. This is a photo we took of the shadow of Mount Everest on the surrounding mountains. It was just really, really incredible. It is just like looking out of an airplane from that altitude. There were some near vertical sections, though, just before that south summit, which were extremely difficult. At this point, we are on hands and knees, clawing ourselves forward, inch by inch. We did reach the south summit. We're standing on the south summit here looking up at Mount Everest. We each left one spare oxygen cylinder here of the three oxygen cylinders we'd each brought before attempting this treacherous summit ridge.